Do you want to know what this tool is used for? Well, watch to the end and find out. All right, let's get started. Okay, so in this video, we are going to be talking about circuit boards, PCBs, and most importantly, drag soldering. That's going to be like kind of the, the main topic of this video. And what can happen is when you're working on a circuit board, especially modern circuit boards like this, you will get what's called like a surface mount um, chip. And what that means is that, you know, you'll, it'll be mounted to the surface of the surface of the circuit board instead of through hole, which is like the old kind of traditional. I mean, they still use it on circuit boards, but it's the kind of traditional through hole where you see the pin go through the circuit board and out the other side and everything like that. So when you don't have a through hole type of connection, it can be intimidating to solder uh, components, but don't worry. I'm going to show you how to do that and give you a lot of confidence when you're soldering circuit boards. All right. So you can see right here, this is a microchip and you can see those little feet, the little legs right there. That's a surface mount uh, component. And if we move forward, you know, you can just see these are going to be like your resistors and everything like that. These are really small, and unfortunately, a soldering iron won't be able to solder them. You're going to have to use heat. And so if we kind of get into this realm right here, we have like our little transistors and everything like that. And you can see the feet on those. You can definitely drag solder uh, those components to the circuit board. Here we have just kind of like more circuit board protection. We have our varistors, thermistors, and thyristors and everything like that. And they just, they're just gonna kinda protect and regulate the circuit board and keep everything working properly. Okay, so now if we move down, you know, one cool thing I wanna kinda add is that, you know, I've been kinda playing around with circuit boards since I was a kid, and one of the things I always thought about was like, man, it looks like a city, and I wonder if this is just like a projection, human projection of like, you know, that we're living in the matrix. And, uh, but okay, so moving forward, these are semiconductors. And this is what we're going to work on uh, for the majority of the video. And you can see that the legs are protected by these resistors here. And uh, so we're going to work on the backside of these semiconductors. Because you can see right there, um, if I, you know, if, if I have to remove them, then I'm going to have to like scrape them. And, and I don't have a heat gun, so we'll save that for another video. But we're going to work on the backside. And in order to do that, we're going to have to remove that yellow uh, Ethernet hub. Another thing I want to kind of show you are these capacitors. And you'll see a lot of these on circuit boards as well. And uh, one thing, they always remind me of like those grain storage units when you drive by farms. All right, so if we flip the board over, you can see this is the through hole connection that I'm talking about. So you see how this yellow ethernet hub sits on top of the circuit board and then underneath right here, the pins go through to the other side. So in order to remove that, you gotta remove the solder. And one cool method to doing that is using flux and a solder wick and, you know, along with your soldering iron, but the main trick is to use the solder wick and flux and flux is flux in this whole video is going to be your best friend. So, you know, always try to rely on flux uh, whenever you're soldering. So you see here, the solder wick pulls the solder from the pin, from the little through hole joint, and it pulls the solder into the copper wick and removes the solder. You can. There's many ways to remove solder. You can use a solder pin, like a depump pin, I think. I used to have one, it broke, and I prefer the solder wick. Uh, it just takes a little bit more time. You gotta be more patient with it. Uh, and, and there is, I guess, a little learning curve with it, but same with the pin. I feel like there's a learning curve with that too. So, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and clean it and see uh, you know, if we got most of the so the solder removed and we're going to try to pry it and see if we can get it off. 
but it looks like there's still some more solder there. And for the sake of time and, you know, just limited resources on solder wick, I am just going to probably uh, just pry this off with some pliers. But you can see right there that most of it, I got, I removed most of the solder and you can see right there it's removed, but let's go ahead and do it the old American way. America, heck yeah. Home of the brave and the bold, yeah. America, heck yeah. Coming to save the mother day, yeah. Baseball, heck yeah. yeah. Rock climbing, heck yeah. yeah. In and out burger, heck yeah. yeah. Salads, all right. Educational YouTube videos like this one, yeah. Soldering, soldering, sure. Books, yeah. Netflix, heck yeah. Mr. Beast, heck yeah. Brain rot, heck yeah. Instagram, heck yeah. Crocs, heck yeah. Dating apps, heck yeah. NASCAR, heck yeah. America, heck yeah. Coming to save the mother fucking day, yeah. All right. So now that we have all of that removed, you can see that for the most part, the PCB, the circuit board is still intact, still good to go if we want to replace it with a new ethernet hub so for for now we're not going to do that we're just going to focus on the semiconductors and drag soldering all right so now we have access to our component and we're going to simulate like what would happen if you know you didn't know how to solder surface mount components and you're just going to solder to the board you know and you can see here you know, I'm I'm soldering it and the solder is just going all over the place. And so what this is called, when you have solder touch multiple leads like this, see, you know how the solder is all over the place. It's what's called solder bridging. And it's a bad thing. You, you don't want to solder bridge because if you solder bridge, then it's going to short things out. Um, or components just won't work. And if you put everything together and don't realize you have a solder bridge, then, you know, sometimes you can chase, you know, you can be chasing your tail for a long time before you find out. And solder bridges can be very small. This is just an over-exaggerated version of a solder bridge. But to correct this, we are going to take a chisel type of a solder tip. This is, this is one of the key components. This is the biggest kind of tip for drag soldering is you want to use the correct tip, solder tip, for drag soldering. So you can see how I just kind of dragged it along all the legs there and the solder just started moving. But we still have too much. So we're going to just take our solder wick and soak up all that excess solder. You can see it's just going into that solder wick and what really helps with this is flux. So once again, flux is your friend whenever you're soldering. Always rely on, on flux. Okay, so now we're going to drag again. And you can see it's just smooth. It's smooth as butter. And also, uh, you can see that it doesn't take a lot of time. Like, you don't need to sit on one pad for very long. You just... Drag and go, drag and go, just like that, you know, and the solder will just, you know, adhere to the legs, the pads, and everything is good if you use uh, a good amount of flux. So now you can see right here, you can also just drag straight down, and sometimes that'll separate a bridge. You see we have a little bridge right there. So if you drag straight down, or if you add a little bit more flux, uh, you can kind of separate the bridge. And so I think what the flux does is it kind of like, you know, uh, creates some sort of like surface barrier, surface tension type thing where it separates the solder and it only allows it to adhere to the copper trace on the circuit board. So you can see right there, we don't have any more bridging. All right, so now we're going to do this second one. And again, we're going to just lay down that flux. And this flux is... Uh, no clean flux, but I highly recommend to always clean flux whenever you're using flux on, you know, any type of soldering. Always clean it. Even if it says no clean, you know, you still want to clean it. And the best way to clean flux is with uh, denatured alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. 
All right, so you can see here, we're just gonna add a little bit of solder to our iron, and we're gonna just go ahead and attempt to drag solder. And you can see right there, it's working flawlessly. Uh, you gotta be careful with other components. You can see off to the right, uh, I'm kind of, there's a component that's kind of in the way. And so, you know, you gotta just angle the iron differently. And, but you can see right there that just dragging it like that at this speed, this is not fast, you know, this is not sped up, this is real time, that, you know, it, it does a great job. So it doesn't take, you know, um, a lot of time. Now you can clean your iron if you're, you know, dealing with a little kind of, you know, solder that just doesn't want to go away. So you can kind of clean your iron and then run it along and see if you can get it. You can also kind of drag down like that. And sometimes that helps. And, you know, if, if none of these techniques help, then, you know, always try adding a little bit more flux or you can use some solder wick like this. And uh, then once you kind of have the solder removed, then you can just add some flux and then drag again. But sometimes you don't even have to do that. And you can see right there that the, the solder is on all of the, you know, feet and then the pads. So like that, you know, and then you can just go back, kind of just drag down just to make sure that you get that solder connected and it's uh, touching and mount, you know, it's, it's, it's a good solder connection. So you can see right there, everything looks great. I mean, just perfect. So that's drag soldering. And once again, isopropyl, that'll clean most of your flux and you can use a lint free, uh, rag or something like that. Chem wipes are really good. I'm using a paper towel. You can also use a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol. That helps. That's really effective. And I use a firm bristle toothbrush just to really kind of get everything removed. Okay, we're going to push it even further. This is a super small uh, just circuit board. And this little uh, semiconductor microchip right here uh, is, I mean, it's small, small. I mean, if you look off to the right on the white table, those little squares, that's a square inch. And so the, the, the whole circuit board is almost, it's, it's a little over a square inch or two square inches. And so that little chip right there is really small. And so, you know, we're going to just see if we can get away with drag soldering on this type of size, this size of chip. And we're not even gonna change the tip. So you can see right there, I'm just gonna drag along and boom, you know, there's no, there's no solder bridging, no burning or anything like that, no melting. You can see right there, boom, it's good. We're just gonna go ahead and clean it up and everything is just perfect. So you can see there that drag soldering can be done at a very, very small scale. So if you're ever intimidated about soldering circuit boards, I hope this video has given you the confidence to be able to, to do it. And you can see right there, all the connections, the tabs, they're perfect. There's no solder bridging. Uh, there's no pads that have lifted or anything like that, no damage to the board. So very good, It's everything is very good. Okay, so you stuck around to the end. Thank you so much. So this is what's called a solder cup. And a solder cup has a little convex uh, hole in it and it holds the solder. And the, the whole philosophy behind that is that it, it holds the solder and as you drag solder, it fills the, it, it, it kind of lays down a little bit of solder on each pad. So when you have like multiple you know, connections and you drag across, it's going to lay down just a little bit of solder. And then it's also going to hold the solder so that it doesn't kind of, you know, spill and create solder bridges. And so we're going to demonstrate that to see how this works. And so you can see right there, we're just going to fill it. We're going to fill it with a little bit of solder right there. And then we're going to add our flux, right? We're going to add our flux and we're just gonna drag across. So you see right there, just gonna drag across just like that. And that was just a smooth first time go 
First go, best go. All right, so now we're gonna go on to the second one. And we didn't add as much flux to the second one, so hopefully we can still get a good pass. And you can see right there, uh, we're just you know dragging along, looks good, and everything like that. So right there, just kind of you know working with that spot and also angle change. If if you find that you know you're kind of getting that little bit of a solder bridge, just go ahead and change the angle and uh, you know, you'll be okay. So you can see there, everything looks good. Now this is another cleaning method you can use. You can use a towel and then brush over the towel or you know, the napkin and you know, just kind of saturate it with isopropyl alcohol. But you can see right there that it was, it was fine, it was okay. All right, so now we are done. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has helped. I hit that like button and I'll see you in the next video. Heck yeah.